Hi everyone, Paul from Fantastic Scale Modeler. Welcome to another video. Um, today I've got a video on assembling um, full model tracks. Um, so we'll run through assembling them, um, cleaning them up, drilling them out, cutting the wire to length, assembling short lengths, etc. And then we'll move on to the second part, which will be uh, using the U, the new Ultimate Modeling Products Burnishing Liquid, which this naturally burnishes the uh, tracks a rusty or track brown colour. Uh, works absolutely brilliantly. Used it a few times myself now uh, as a tester. Used it on the Tiger, the Panzer IV, and what you're going to see now on the Hellcat. So, what do you need for building for all tracks? Well, of course, you need for all tracks, which for me, we've gone from my M18 Hellcat. Um, they always say on the front 170 links, there's 170 uh, individual track links in there. In there you'll get two bags of tracks, uh, they'll either be mirrored or identical. Um, so these are mirrored so they're different for each side. You'll also get a length of wire and a small instruction sheet as well. So always worth a look at, I've built these many times now so I don't look at these anymore. But as a little bit of information, um, check all the links, no, left and right or additional links are treated separately. So if you've got a left bag, you need to assemble those separately and these and treat, etc. build separately because they're for each different side of the tank. Um, about trim, so there'd be odd casts of white metal on there that need trimming off sand in. You would drill each one out using a 0.5mm drill bit. As you can see, if you want to read this, pause it and have a look. I'm not going to read it all because I've read it many times. Uh, then it says about cleaning them, which we'll go through in a little bit as well, and super gluing them, which again, we'll show at the end as well. So, two ways you can do this. Uh, you can either assemble them in their lengths, get them all assembled together, uh, and then weather them, treat them, etc. If you're using a burnishing fluid, then you'll assemble it as one, and then pop into a tub like this with the entire, both lengths of track and nervy spare links as well. Or, that, that's how I used to always do it all the way, I've been doing it recently, is treat each bag separately before you assemble them. Chuck them in a little pot, like something like this, with a seal proof lid. Pot it in, give it a good shake, leave it as long as you want, uh, take it out and then assemble. I find that easier because I think you get a better finish on the tracks themselves. So, that's probably what we'll do today. What we'll do though, we'll go on the assumption you're going to assemble them all first. Uh, and I'll show a few links going together. And then because I'm going to assemble them separately, we'll show them all together at the end once they're burnished. So basically you need a 0.5mm drill bit and a pin vise, like so. As you can see, very very fine drill bit. You need a pair of cutters. Uh, I have a pair of cutters especially for cutting this wire. Uh, and as you can see by the teeth, if you can see it, they're absolutely battered. So don't be using your good uh, plastic cutters for this. You also need super glue. I recommend the Bob Smith stuff, recommended by Cohen. Very, very good super glue. Uh, a bit awkward to get in the UK, but you can find it. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely superb. And then, of course, if you're going to burnish them, which I would recommend doing, I've done every set of frills I've ever done has been burnished. And they always come out brilliantly. There's an older video to this from a while back that'll disappear now, and we'll use this up to date one. But I did it a while back for my King Tiger. And again, the, the liquid works absolutely brilliantly. Ultimate, obviously, is myself and Lee. Uh, Ultimate. We are ultimate, everything we have works brilliantly, and this stuff's non different, but we'll get to that in the second part. So, keep your tracks separately. So, if you've got two lengths, keep them in the bag, don't take them out. Uh, keep your wires separate as well. Grab your track links. Now, I find it handy to have a little pot. So, once you've drilled one, chuck it in the pot, you know you're done. So, these are your metal track links. So, as you can see, they're very, very nicely cast. There's no real excess. Uh, white metal on there. If there was, I'll normally use one of our 220 sanders and just give it a quick sand, get the excess off, job done. Or if it's big enough, come with your clippers and just snip it to remove any excess. So they are cast, the holes are in there, but they all need opening up a little bit just to ensure that you can get your, um, your wire through hassle free. So two holes per side, so Literally a case of popping it through. Once you go clean through, and one will go all the way through and then stop just as it hits the other side. So you don't want to come right through here, you want to stop. Now, what I find best now, once you get that first one where you want it, undo your pin vise, pop it flush with the end. So now every one you do only goes that far. So if you look where that's gone, it's literally 
just started to go into the next one and that's it so that's one link done you've got 170 do <laughs> it's quite a boring laborious task I did it watching TV in the house with the family um, we'll just do a five length run and I'll show you how it's done so like I say the bottom ones are a little bit bigger on these nice and clear the top one does need clear now because of the way they cast the holes do get some casting material in there so the bottom one's slightly harder to clean out, that top one's nice and clear. Now, worst thing can happen here is you either snap the drill bit and you've got to find a new one, which sods law never having done 0.5. So if you're gonna be doing these regular buy a stock up on 0.5 mil drill bits, uh, and secondly the worst thing that can happen is if it snaps and then the drill bit goes into your finger, which has happened many many times to me and I'm sure anybody else who's assembled these before will be sitting there nodding their head going yep it's happened to me and my god does it hurt because I'll tell you now that broken drill bit will go straight in your thumb and right down to bone <laughs> um, so just take your time and drill in it and that's it so there's four also remember this white metal I can't remember the metal I think white metal is it lead zinc and something else and tin it is poisonous so you'll be better off wearing gloves um, or just make sure you really clean your hands well when you're done because if you can see that finger there you do get a bit of swarp on you and you do get it on your surface so if you're doing it in the house make sure you're not doing it to your kids, your dogs or your family etc just to ensure nobody suffers the after effects of it so there's five done um, we will cut off a small length of wire we can get to it I hate doing this because it's normally a pain so I'm going to snip a little bit off you get a big coil you don't get a massive amount of spare usually so don't go chucking it all over the place willy nilly now the track links you will get some spare ones obviously if you spare tracks on your vehicle and you will end up with some left over as well because it's par for the course through assembly you'll damage a couple um, or some will be already damaged so as you assemble you want the holes on both sides so they're both on this side so keep this to whichever hand you are um, pop the next one in on top they should fit in fairly easily so I've never ever done these ones before they kind of hold themselves in without any persuasion so once you get them lined up like so grab your wire slide it through what I like to do is get the snips, don't snip it, just grab it, twist a little bit, trim. One done. So there you go. That's one track assembled. Now, when you're done and you're happy with everything, uh, if you're going to treat them, super glue won't uh, treat with the trap burnisher fluid. So be very spare, uh, sparing with the super glue. What you want to do, where the little hole is, just there in front of my index now, where that wire went in, a little tiny dab of super glue, just over the top, just to hold the wire in. Or the other way I like to do it is, before you put, as you put the wire in, as I show you now, as you go to put it in, dip the front of the wire in super glue. I'm not going to do it because I need to take these to bits. I'll show you now. Dip the wire in the super glue first and then pass it through and I find that works a lot better and is a lot neater because all the super glue is then inside so there's two as you can see it's not really challenging to do it's just a little bit boring like I say drilling them out I'll normally do in the house assembly I'll do it in a hangout or when chatting to somebody on Skype or something just as I mean to pass in the time because it is laborious, it is a little bit boring. It's a nice easy job and the end effect is well well worth it. So there we go, there's four and five. Keep the end of the wire straight each time. Pop it through. It in, job done. Once you're in, snip it, and there we go. There's a five length done. Easy, not too long, and as I say, not too hard to do either. Now, 
What I tend to do is assemble them in lengths of 10, then start sticking them together in the full, the full length that you need. Once you start getting near the end of the amount of uh, tracks you've got left for each side, start to test them on the tank, um, put them on to get the right amount you need, and then you can add or take off more to add tightness or sag to the links as required. That's per personal preference. Or if you've got the likes of a dragon kit, normally the rear idler you can turn, it's on a counter, uh, what's the word? It's on an odd leg, so as you turn it, it'll retract in and out, so it tightens up or loosens them. But once you, like I say, assemble them to 10, then start to assemble them all together, job done. So that's it. So basically it's all the way through, do them in length to 10, set them up to you got, you know, however, seven of each one, then start assembling a big link, test them on the vehicle to see how many you need, and like I say, you're going to have some left over for spare tracks for any broken ones, or spare links on the actual tank itself. Uh, next up is the burnishing, um, so you need to decide if you're going to do it assembled or loose, I'll be doing them loose, uh, because I find it a lot easier, uh, and for that you need to give them a a rinse with a detergent, uh, it actually tells you in the instructions, I think it's step five, four, three, get there in the end. Uh, wash the cast slightly in warm water with a few drops of detergent, so get your tub, a bit of lukewarm water, a couple of drops of furry liquid or washing up liquid, chuck the whole one side bag of links in, put the lid on, give it a shake, give it a good shake, take it out, rinse them in clean water and then spread them out on the kitchen roll to dry naturally. Don't put any heat source to them, just let them dry overnight or you know an afternoon in the sun or whatever. Uh, when you've done that you then come back for step two. So depending on how you're going to assemble your tracks, if you're going to assemble them in one uh, complete length both sides and then treat them, then you need to go through, clean each one up, assemble them one big length, so you end up with a big bracelet of tracks for each side and then you need to get a bigger tub like this, which both tracks will fit in, fold it over, you then put the whole bottle in, 125 uh, ml in there and then dilute that down with another 100 milliliters of water, which you can use our bottle again, fill it up to just below the neck, put it in, mix it all around, pop the tracks in, if you've got a lid, put the lid on, give them a shake around, give them a brush or a brush, tip them around, get any air bubbles out if you can and treat them that way. Um, leave them in there 10-15 minutes or overnight, 12 hours, depending on how dark you want them. You can see it go as you go, and we'll show it in a second, the difference. I've done it that way in the past. Uh, I found it a little bit more difficult doing them as a full track length because getting them in there and moving them around separately is a bit difficult. So what I prefer to do, like I said, that uses the whole bottle in that tub of 100 milliliters of water. I prefer to use smaller tubs like these and treat each bag of tracks before they are actually even drilled, assembled, anything. All that's been done to these is over I clean them in some detergent, so a bit of washing up liquid, a few drops of that and some lukewarm water in a tub like this, keep each track side separate, give them a rinse, a shake round, get them a good clean, get any, uh, you know, so, uh, sorry, gunk off there any grease etc, take them out, clean them in clean water, leave them to dry naturally and then come back and come to this stage. So because we're going to treat them in each box uh, separately, like so, what we need to do is you go on half and half in each one. Now you can guess and just go half, I'm going to measure it just because I'm a bit pedantic like that, to make sure it's done properly. So we want about 60 millilitres of the burnishing fluid in here, like so. So as you can see, it easily covers the tracks. Uh, we should have 60 and a drop left over, which we do. So we'll put a little splodge in each one, <laughs> or a bit more in that one rather, uh, it doesn't matter. And then come back, a little bit of water. So because it's 100 ml for four bottle, you want about 50 ml of water in here. So again, measure it out. So we're about to there. Like so, and in the other one, hopefully it'll fit in because I had a little bit too much fluid, but it does fine, that's no problem at all. So as soon as you put that in, those, they start to work instantly. Pop the lid on, now these kind of containers can be found in pound shops, uh, 99 cent stores, depending on the world you are. They're very cheap, hopefully they're gonna be watertight because it's the first time I've used these. Pop them in, make sure you're in, and then this is why I prefer to do this this way. We do have a little bit of leakage because that side's not locked on. There we go. So with this way, because they're loose, I find it easier to agitate. As you can see, I'm spilling a little bit. 
it's a case of just flipping it round. What you're trying to do by this, and this is why I think this is easier than the other way, is you get rid of any air pockets that are in the teeth of the track. If there's air in there, or super glue especially, the trap version fluid won't work on that part. So make sure you keep agitating them, turn them round, roll them round, give them a shake. And as you're going through, you will see the water or the fluid starting to change colour. So just keep manipulating it round and round and round. I've got a bit of a leak on this side because it's not going to on properly. But literally keep doing that. And as we can see inside, they are starting to change colour. I'd say 10-15 minutes is adequate for this. Uh, it should give you plenty of um, coverage, but depends how dark you want them. I'm going to leave mine overnight. I'm going to leave them 12 hours overnight. But I'll show you the effect. What we'll do, we'll cut and we'll come back in about 10 minutes and we'll see what they're like. So, once they're agitated, I'm happy with all the airs out. Put them to one side. You can see there the water, the fluid's gone a lot darker. It shows it's starting to work. So, I'm happy with that. If I look through the bottom, yep, they started to work fantastically. So, I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes and we'll come back in a minute and see how they get on. Okay, so it's been literally, oh, not even 10 minutes, it's been about 7 minutes since we started doing this. Uh, I've left them to one side, had a quick look underneath, and they look absolutely spot on already. Uh, whether I'll leave them overnight still, I do not know, I don't know if they need it. So we grab this side, I'll grab one out, we'll dry it off, in fact we'll grab several, just at random, to see how they're done. Just going to dry them off quickly, don't forget to keep your gloves on, don't get this stuff on your fingers. Um, don't touch your eyes or anything like that. Because it is not nice at all for your skin. So there we go. So if we pop that over there. So as you can see, the colour of the fluid's gone a lot darker than it was. If I grab that one and that one and bring it up to the camera, you can see how nicely brown they have gone. Now, when you take it out, once you're happy with the colour you've got, uh, get all your uh, spare track links, sorry, spare track, your loose track links out of the fluid into a different container with clean water, keep them separate still, don't mix them up uh, and give them a good rinse in clean water because clean water neutralizes the burnishing fluid effect um, then lay them out on a clean piece of kitchen paper, again keep them separate, spread them out and leave them naturally to dry overnight but I think you'll admit that is a really nice colour on those already, that's literally after 5-7 to seven minutes of being in the fluid and obviously the longer you leave it the darker it's going to go but for me that is a fantastic colour and I think that is about done for me. I am more than happy with that colour. Uh, we grab the other one as well just quickly to show you that both of them are the same. Obviously I added more fluid to one side by accident but it doesn't matter. It's not the amount, it's the, the uh, how concentrated it is. And obviously because we thinned it with water it's taken it down. It doesn't have to be exact but again exactly the same. Nice dark rust colour. I'm going to pop them back in so we don't get the sides mixed up. Um, so there we go, so what I'll do now, I'll take these out, uh, we'll let them dry, and then I'll assemble uh, a full length, and we'll come back and show you them assembled and the colour that they've gone. Okay, so it's approximately 12 hours later, um, all the tracks have uh, been out of water, they're in the, in the fluid for about an hour, uh, I took them out late last night, left them to dry, I've assembled them, uh, and this is where we're at now. So I've got one length on the tank itself, which we'll get to in a second, and one length off. So we're bringing in for a close look. Have a look, as you can see we've got a nice rusty brown track colour all the way along the insides. As you can see we've got tonal variation in places where the, uh, the fluid's taken differently. And that gives real nice effect. On the actual track side, again you can see the nice dark brown track colour. And again, the nice tonal variation, which is where the fluid hasn't quite reached properly, or there's been a bit of swarf in there, and it's reacted with, which to me is great because that gives, like I say, the tonal variation, and they're not just a monotone track. So that's that. What I've got, I've got a few differences here. We've got uh, a link after, let me see, that's a five minute link. I'll put it in my hand so you can see. So that's after five minutes, that's after an hour. And this one's after 12 hours, and you can see the massive difference between the 12 hour and these two. As you can see, after 5 minutes the colour's taken really well, very very quick. Um, so there's no problems there. The hour one's got a bit more tonal variation, as you can see it's reacted a bit differently. We've got 
tone variation in between the teeth there and the 12 hour one has just gone really dark so you can you can adjust this to how you want your tracks to look if you want them really dark leave them in for long a lot longer if you want them nice you know just brown nothing else leave them in for five ten but well, ten minutes at the most and then if you want a bit of variation leave them in for the hour like I say totally up to you but you can see real dark real light and the in between of a little bit of tonal difference so that's the effect of leaving it in for that long um, for me the five minutes to ten minutes works great um, if we go to the assembled link this is on my Hellcat so as you can see on the Hellcat there's no sag they are live tracks so there's no sag on there unfortunately they are absolutely superb we go to the front you can see there we've got all that nice tonal variation all the way along right the way and they should even move along which they do as you can see okay so I showed you one side that was all taut um, as it should be on the Hellcat uh, so what I've done on the other side, I've added an extra link, just temporarily, and we'll put them on, and we'll see how it looks with a bit of sag. Uh, massively over-exaggerated the sag on this, though, because it doesn't have it, um, as far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, so getting the tracks on, this can be a bit fiddly, and it's definitely uh, a time they can turn the air blue. So bear that in mind, I'm going to put that pin there, because we'll need that in a minute. I find the easiest way is to have the tank upright, make sure your... Um, Pins with the end you put your pins in is on the inside because that's where they go. Um, slide them up. I just remembered I've got a slightly bent toot somewhere. There we go. Sorted. So grab it with the tweezers and take it up through the return rollers. Past the idle wheel all the way up to the top. This is a little bit fiddly. It's uh, probably one of the most frustrating parts of doing this. It drives me to distraction because they keep getting caught and everything they can on the way up like so so it's just a case of easing it past gently with a bit of persuasion as much as you can once you get it to the sprocket we've got a couple of loose pins at the top because obviously I've got to remove some of the teeth teeth some of the tracks well, one, hopefully one anyway. Come on, get in there. There we go. Once you get it upright, you can then flip it over, pop it on and round, and then the fiddly task of getting the pin in. Make sure you guys are in shot there. Trying to block it with my fingers. So you need to line it up, grab your pin. Pop it in like so. so the sides of the going to bend. So I find grabbing the, the cutters, bend it back up. Pushing it in. Obviously you're going to remove it, leave it sticking out a bit. Don't put it all in. Okay, so what I've done, I've added an extra link to that other side. Um, so we've now got this side on and we've got a bit of extra... Uh, track on there now so what we can do we can show it depicted with sag so you see the side where it's uh, nice and taut on the live tracks this side if you're doing German armour or something that wasn't requiring nice taut ta tracks you can see the effect you get from the sag so that's the great thing about frills not only can you weather them with the burnishing fluid nice quick and easy you can also add sag to the vehicle as well so there you go, so that's both sides, I'll remove this link, we'll put it in contort again so it looks properly. Um, that's a track burnishing fluid, uh, very easy to use, very quick, very simple, no mucking about. You can leave those tracks as you wanted now, uh, or you can add some washes, pigments, and tie them on to rest your weathering. Or even just straight away with the fluid, they look absolutely superb. So there you go. So thanks for watching guys. There's our burnishing fluid. You can buy it directly from us at uh, www.umpretail.com um, and I'm sure you're going to see this out and about in a few other shops at a later date as well. Brand new product for us. Looking forward to getting this one out there. I've done a lot of testing on it and it's nice to see uh, the end result. So there you go. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you around and I'll see you on the forums.